This is Sermon Snippets with Max Taylor. Our goal is to explain the Bible and show how its truths apply to everyday life. Let's hear what God's Word has for us today. We're continuing to look at God's work in each of our lives as we read James chapter 1, verses 22 through 27 today. So hopefully we're going to finish the first chapter of this book. And I'm going to go ahead and start reading in verse 22 of James chapter 1. The Bible says, But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself, and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. This is such a convicting section. What James is saying here is, We are called not just to hear God's word, but also to do it. We're really instructed throughout scripture to keep God's law and to observe his commandments. I'm thinking back to a section in the book of Mark where uh, Jesus is approached by the ruler who came to basically trip him up. And he asked Jesus, what was the greatest commandment? And Jesus responded to him with, this portion of scripture that we call the Shema. And it comes out of Deuteronomy chapter 6, where it starts in verse 4 and it keeps on going. But basically that's the passage that says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul, with all thy might and with all thy strength. And this is what Jesus quotes to him. This is Jesus' response to this ruler who, who approached him, this lawyer. And it's interesting because the word Shema, it actually means, when you you translate it directly from Hebrew, it means hear, listen, obey, and do. Hear, listen, obey, do. And it's interesting because back in Israel during this time, the Jewish parents would use that to uh, instruct their children. Sometimes they would just say Shema. And it means, hey, you need to listen, you need to hear what I'm saying, you need to obey it and do it. And I've even heard of uh, of preachers who use this with their, in their family, they use it with their children, because sometimes they might uh, tell their children to do something, and then their children take a while to actually listen and actually do that. And so they'll say, hey, Shema. It means you need to hear what I'm saying, listen, and obey it and do it. It's a call to action. And God told the Jews in the Old Testament to write God's commands on, uh, not just on their heart, but also on uh, physical objects that they would see, that they would touch, and that they would constantly be reminded of his law and, and the Shema, this call for them to hear, listen, obey, and do. And that call is still clear in the New Testament where Jesus says we're supposed to hear his word and listen to it. But that's not where it stops. We're supposed to go on to obey it and do it. We're faced with the very same decision that the children of Israel were. The decision of what am I going to do with God's word when it's presented to me? When the New Testament talks about virtue, it's really defined as a commitment to develop and display the character of Jesus to the glory of God. Virtue is our decision that we're going to follow God no matter what the cost is. It's that we've already counted the cost and we're determining to display the attributes of the Lord to those around us. So basically it's the decision. We, we already have to make the decision that we're going to do what God's word says. It's, it's that heart attitude of, Lord, whatever you say in your word, I will do it. It comes with a plea to, to God to reveal any sin in our life that's not consistent with who he wants us to be. And we have to have that desire that God would show us what's not right in our own hearts so that God can change us from the heart and that we'll start to do what he wants us to do. I don't know about you, but I want to do 
what God says. I don't want it to just be something I hear. I don't want his word to be something that I read. I want to really be changed by his word. And that's what this chapter is talking about. This is a work of God. He says, but be doers of the word and not hearers only. Don't just be a hearer, be a doer. Jesus said, that's how I can tell that you love me, by your obedience to my word. That's what Jesus says. And notice that when we only listen to God's word and we don't apply it, we are deceiving ourselves. It says, deceiving your own selves. For if any man be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is likened to man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. Because when we behold our reflection, we pay no attention to the blemishes and the marks and the impurities that are revealed, but we just go our way and we're not going the way that's prescribed to us. I think that's interesting. It says he just goes his own way and we forget what God said. That's, that's terrifying that we would hear God's word that we would see problems in our life, but we would just go our own way, that we would choose to go our own way. And that's where the discussion comes back to faith. That's what this whole chapter has been coming back to. Will the trials in our life grow our faith? Will we ask for wisdom in faith, doubting nothing? Will we abstain from temptation in faith that God's way is better? And will we obey God's word in faith? All the topics in this chapter comes back to faith. Are we going to go God's way or are we just going to go our own way? The whole New Testament talks about following God's law. Jesus says the greatest commandments are to love God and to love others. And that's how the world knows that we follow God, is by us loving one another, us keeping God's commandments. And that's what James is pointing out. He says, if we're going to be consistent, God has to work in our hearts to not just hear his word, but to do it, to obey God's word in faith. But the other option is in verse 25. He says, but whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, He being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the word, this man shall be blessed in his deed. So the other option is for those who look and continue in the things that are revealed. This individual is blessed in what he or she does because he's consistent with God's purpose for him. Really, there's two essential truths found here. First, God's word is the final right Answer. Jesus said in John 17, 17, Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. So God's word is the final right answer. And second, God's purpose for me is Christ's likeness. So how do we get there? Well, by taking heed to God's word and letting it correct our lives and determine our steps and dictate our direction in this life. So his closing remarks for this chapter, James mentions the tongue in verse 26. He says, If any man among you seem to be religious and bridleth not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, this man's religion is vain. And we're going to come back to this in chapter 3. So I won't say a whole lot about the tongue right here. But then also he says, he describes real faith. He says, pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. If you want to see Christianity in action, it's found in the person who talks to a lady who just lost her dad. It's found in the person who sets aside their time to visit those in the nursing home. It's found in the person who doesn't partake in worldliness. If you want to see real Christianity, that's the real thing. May God help us as we try to live out his calling for each of us as his children.